Welcome to a realm where ancient spirits come alive and spirits in Chinese brushes. Two millennia ago, when the Epang Palace met flames, a school of naturalists mourned Qin Shi Huang's book-burning era. Fast forward, enter Lu Zhangxia, an unsuspecting college student who stumbles upon Lei Bai's mystical King Lian posthumous Chinese brush. Superpowers awaken, but danger lurks as dark forces covet the brush's influence. Follow Lu Zhangxia's quest to safeguard his newfound abilities and forge a bond with the enigmatic seven lords in charge of the city. Unravel the secrets of ink and magic in this riveting tale. As a man is drinking something, he's approached by someone who admires his poetic talent and proposes turning his spirit into an ink brush. After consuming a magical drink, the man transforms into a brush spirit, leaving the strange man amazed. As a student, Lu is sitting in his class, he's unable to answer a question asked by his teacher, Miss Zhu, after which a classmate, Zheng, takes him to the front of the class to apologize, but he accidentally snaps the brush in two. As a result of the mishap, Lu and Zhang are summoned to the principal's office, where the principal harshly reprimands Lu due to the Mr. Zhu's high standing in the field. However, Mr. Zhu intervenes and proposes a solution. If Lu can find a replacement brush at a flea market, the incident will be overlooked and emphasizes the virtues of an ink brush seeing this as an opportunity for mutual benefit. Despite initial reluctance, Lu remarks on a quest to find the brush, expecting that Mr. Ju may be testing his resolve. During his search at the flea market, Lu encounters a persistent brush vendor and sneakily learns valuable information about the brush's location from Zhen. Meanwhile, the man from before, Ching Lian, now transformed into a brush spirit, is amused by the idea of Lu searching aimlessly for the brush. Lu eventually discovers that the sought-after brush is located in a thrift shop at Yeshen Road. Unaware of Lu's pursuit, Zhang casually enjoys lunch while Lu, having overheard their conversation, heads to the shop. Upon arriving, Lu encounters a girl, Rong, who works at the shop. While waiting for her grandfather to price the brush, a guy barges in, displaying aggressive behavior and attempts to seize the box containing the brush, but Lu intervenes to protect Rong. A supernatural battle starts, with the stranger revealing a demonic possession and Lu showcasing his resilience before Rong activates her powers, leading to a clash of spirit brushes. The stranger absorbs the stolen brush's power, glowing green, and launches an attack before Lu counters with poetry. Creating a rainstorm that nullifies the enemy's tornado, once the enemy's been defeated, Lu faints. While he's dreaming, Lu envisions waking up on a boat with pleasant happy juice. However, the dream takes a nightmarish turn when he is thrown into the water by a tornado wave. Startled awake, Lu finds himself in an unfamiliar room, relieved that the previous ordeal was just a dream. As he explores his surroundings, he discovers a pink handkerchief and is interrupted by an old man, Mr. Wei, and his granddaughter, Rong. Mr. Wei expresses dissatisfaction with the perceived weakness of today's youth and introduces himself and Rong before Lu, still disoriented, pleads for an update on what happened after he fainted so Mr. Wei attributes Lu's collapse to the cold artifacts in the shop but dismisses any signs of weakness. Lu recalls witnessing Rong engaging in a battle, but Mr. Wei brushes it off as a hallucination. When Lu inquires about the pineapple texture wolf hairbrush, Mr. Wei reveals it was sold to someone named Zhang. Feeling responsible for Lu's accident, Mr. Wei decides to give him another ink brush as compensation, emphasizing its value and advising Lu to care for it. As Lu contemplates whether his visions were hallucinations, he heads to Mr. Zhu's residence to replace the broken brush. Surprising everyone, Lu hands over a box, and when Mr. Zhu opens it, a remarkable brush is revealed. Impressed, Mr. Ju asks Lu to write with it, and to everyone's amazement. Lu demonstrates an unprecedented knowledge of the four virtues of an ink brush. Meanwhile, in a historic village, a lady attempts to enter a restricted area using deceptions. Lu struggles to believe his experiences were mere visions and visits an internet cafe where a peculiar ad allows him to suddenly read ancient characters. Later, Lu intervenes in a fight against some gangsters using newfound powers, leaving him contemplating the reality of his hallucinations. But as he's walking home, he starts experiencing strange occurrences with light bulbs bursting before a monster attacks him and starts choking him. As he tries to throw it off in vain, Rong suddenly arrives. Lu is kicked into a lamppost as Rong arrives and questions him about the ink brush they gave him, so he admits to giving it away. As the monster approaches, Rong effortlessly defeats it with ice powers and turns it back into a brush and crushes it, revealing her unique abilities. The next day, she takes him to her grandpa, Mr. Wei, who explains that the monster was an ink brush turned into a puppet creature. These individuals with such powers are called brush puppeteers, and Lu has become entangled in this world. Mr. Wei, amused by Lu's presence for the second time, provides insight into his situation and clarifies that the brush given to him could have protected him against the puppet, but expresses concern about Lu giving it away. 
Liu defends his actions, citing the misleading information they provided. Although Mr. Wei concedes it was an accident, he promises to protect Liu and suggests that, as an average person, he should forget everything and live a normal life. Unsatisfied with this, Liu later says he wants to understand the truth about his powers, so Rong tells him that her grandpa can provide answers and takes Liu to him, so Mr. Wei explains the dangerous nature of brush puppetry and acknowledges Liu's role in defeating the man at the shop, after which Liu expresses that he wants to embrace his powers and protect others, so Mr. Wei decides to reveal the history of brush spirits, starting with the inventor of the pen who sealed talented scholars' spirits and brushes during a dangerous era. He says the spirit within Lu's brush belongs to the poetry King Li Bai hearing, which Lu exitedly wonders if he is now the king of all those wielding brushes before Mr. Wei continues, explaining that seven superior brush spirits, including the Green Lotus Ink Brush, are connected through auras before the brush puppeteer Lai suddenly arrives and starts battling Mr. Wei, while Rong tells Lu about the importance of the Green Lotus Ink Brush. Later, Li's doppelganger is defeated by Mr. Wei, who takes an attack to protect Lu, but the real threat from the Zhuge family remains, and Mr. Wei emphasizes the need for him to control his powers and hints at the potential danger Lu poses if left untrained, so Lu agrees to learn and control his abilities, since he's determined to protect himself and others. Later, Rong offers to protect Lu and train him, while Mr. Wei says they need to split the brush spirit from Lu, who says he'll take responsibility for his powers. Meanwhile, a mysterious lady at a historical tourist city is revealed to have stolen brushes from the pin library. Later, Rong and Lu sit at a bench and she tells him about how brush spirits sync with their host as Zhang overhears this and decides to get one for himself. Lu remarks he's bored with ancient literature and questions the need for studying it, so Rong explains the importance of understanding scholar Kin Lion to establish a connection with the green lotus brush and reminds him of the threat from the Zhuge family, particularly after Li's attack. Frustrated, Lu wonders if he'll be helped by her allies, but she dismisses the idea since no one wants to fight the Zhuge family. Rong simplifies the influence of a scholar's traits on brush spirits, emphasizing the need to understand them for effective counters, and impresses Lu with an example of Chun Shi's cloud writer ink brush. Encouraged to study the writing, he shifts the topic to the creator of the pen burial technique, expressing skepticism about the pioneer's contributions, but Rong defends the pioneer, highlighting his role in preserving cultural heritage. Lu's powers are activated as he reflects on the sadness of souls being refined into brush spirits, and they move on to the next literature piece, with Lu eager to stay in Rong's good graces. In frustration, Zheng contemplates Lu's progress as Lu calls Mr. Ju to retrieve the coreless ink brush, only to find that Ms. Kin borrowed it, so he heads to Zheng's uncle's place, but finds him unconscious along with the battered Zheng. Ms. Kin, revealed as the brush thief, confronts Lu, threatening to turn him into her brush puppet so Lu pretends to be a member of the Zhuge family to save himself, but Ms. Kin sees through his deception and uses her powerful brush spirit against him to punish him for his lies. Ms. Kin attempts to end Lu, but he counters her with a powerful recitation of a poem, breaking free from the chain and shattering it. His newfound abilities, connected to the green lotus brush remnant, astonish both Ms. Kin and his friends. As Lu hovers in the air, he recalls the famous poems invoking a cloud to attack Ms. Kin. Despite her attempts with various manifestations, Lu overwhelms her with a flood before his powers suddenly deactivate, leaving him vulnerable and in pain. As he recovers, Lu notices an item dropped by Ms. Qin, which he picks up before noticing Zheng. He takes him to a hospital and with help from Yan deposits him onto a couch where Rong checks his condition. At the hospital, Lu explains the encounter with Ms. Qin, and Rong assesses Zheng's devastating injuries caused by the cordless ink brush before his father arrives thanking Lu for saving his son and giving him money as a form of gratitude. Once Lu's explained what happened, Rong advises him to be cautious in future encounters. Later, Yan connects with a brush spirit from the thing Lu had picked up. Later, Yan suddenly awakens his powers before an evil illusion spirit attacks them before his powers are revealed to be able to heal all injuries and they successfully defeat the enemy who retreats before Rong warns Lu of potential dangers. Later, Lu reflects on his victory and the mysteries surrounding brush spirits, at the hospital, he tries to heal Zheng with his powers, but is unable to and goes outside to see Rong talking to someone as she tells them on the phone that he's easy to lead around. He confronts her asking what she means, so she in turn asks if he really didn't think about why she wanted to hang out with someone like him. Rong received a scolding from her grandfather for calling him at an inconvenient time, despite being a smart girl, so she admits to not thinking clearly while Lu leaves the hospital. Reflecting on Rong's explanation of her grandfather setting up an arrangement to build trust from which the goal was to use Lu, possessing the red and green lotus brush remnants, 
to track the seven legendary brushes. In a flashback, it's revealed that Rong had deceived Liu, manipulating him into risking his life. Discovering this, Liu feels betrayed and questions the authenticity of the attractiveness of beautiful women. He later runs into Miss Kin at the hospital, where she proposes an alliance to find the legendary brushes and adds further complexity to Liu's situation. Despite his resentment towards the Wei family, Liu hesitantly agrees to team up with Kin in pursuit of a common goal. However, Ms. Kin, with hidden intentions, tricks Liu by incapacitating him with a taser and kidnaps him to bring him to the Farron Temple, where she reveals her plan to end him and take the Green Lotus Brush Remnant. As she prepares to attack, Master Baidi intervenes, saying she assaulted people and stole brushes in the Wei Mansion not too long ago and calling her actions sinful as Liu, initially hesitant, joins forces with him and his student Zhu against her. In a showdown at the temple, Kin manipulates the situation, using Lu as a shield and attempting to escape. However, Zhu overpowers her, prompting her to request Lu's assistance in fending off their attackers, but despite his initial excitement, Lu remains wary of her intentions. The conflict takes an unexpected turn when Master Bai Dei, recognizing the significance of Lu's brush, explains the rarity of the Green Lotus Brush Remnant and its importance in reopening the pin burial ritual as Lu learns more about Rome's family history the turmoil within the Wei family, and the role of their grandfathers in shaping their destinies. As the group discusses the past, Yan arrives there and reveals himself as Lu's friend and a brush spirit host before they confront the guy from before, Chenking, who is trying to kill someone. Chenking wildly expresses gratitude to his lord for acquiring the green lotus brush vestige, allowing him to possess two of the seven legendary brushes at once as they find out that the guy he was trying to finish is one of the seven legendary brushes. Bide expresses surprise at the degeneration of the Zhuge family, resorting to taking lives for their brushes before Zhu starts fighting Chanking. Liu attempts to counter with his powers, but a deficiency hinders him and despite lacking a brush spirit, Zhu summons a powerful gust of wind and attacks Chanking, overpowering him for a second before the battle intensifies and Chanking, despite evading attacks, eventually disarms Zhu before attacking Baide who Yen isn't able to heal because of the CT, not having recovered yet, Baidi tells them to get out of her and summons a shield, but Chanking manages to capture Lu and initiates a pen extraction process, revealing that Lu is next since he'll pay back for what he did earlier. In the chaos, Lu discovers a power allowing him to summon a dragon. Chanking takes out the pupil marking ink brush, but Yan stops him by using his power, and they discover that his ability is able to turn back time as the fight concludes with Lu defeating Chanking by using the pupil marking ink brush. Later, Lu is shocked at the lawlessness in their world, leading to concerns about his safety before Baide checks on him and reveals that no one has ever owned two brush spirits simultaneously. He encourages Lu, referring to him as the Chosen One and reveals a riddle from Rom, suggesting a safe way to split the brush spirit from the hosts so the group decides to investigate two pin burial locations, the Machine Temple and the Green Sky Menory, and they head to the Wai family house, shocked to find it a tourist site. Upon arriving at the chief's quarters, Lu learns about Baide's familial connections and his unique experience with two brushes. The chief, unsure about Lu's ability to handle multiple brush spirits, attempts to use his powers on them and later decides to let them make their own decisions and apologizes, revealing the pupil marking ink brush's power. The chief instructs Lu on using the brush, emphasizing its power of prophecy. However, he warns Lu about the lifespan reduction with each use. The brush suggests splitting from Lu in a poetic response, leaving the decision to him before the chief's autumn breezing brush suddenly leaves his body, indicating his demise after which Baide starts crying. As the people of village quickly crowd around the passed away chief after a maid alerts them horrified, they ask about where Lu and Baide went and decide to cut off all paths to stop them from escaping. Meanwhile, Lu and Baide enter a large deserted hall and Baide reveals a secret stairway, Going down which they come to a large door, which he explains is the entrance-wise large library that houses all the free sprit ink brushes collected by the villagers. Since the access to it is strictly prohibited without the chief's permission, it'll take some time for the villagers to decide what they should do. They enter and run into spirit brushes triggered by Lu's flashlight. Lu swiftly defeats them and they look for a path to exit, which Bai defines out by the shapes of famous poems inscribed into the walls. As they leave, he explains that it's meant for the chief to take the spirit brushes in a time of emergency and leave with the villagers with minimal loss. At the exit, Baidi tells him to go on alone since he has to clear their name with the villagers as well so Lu leaves and later as he's getting ready to sleep, he remembers wrong and distressingly wonders what love is so Yan says women will only slow him down so he shouldn't hesitate since he's got both him and Zhu. 
The next day, they go to the Yongsen temple and find that the master buried all the brushes, so they head to the cemetery where three people from the Zhuge family corner them. A man traps Yan in a realm where they both transform into brushes and have to fight in a battle of poem interpretation and rhyme analysis to get out. Meanwhile, the woman, Shiju who uses knives, starts fighting Lu and breaks through every weapon he creates so he summons a dragon to evade her attacks, but she slashes the way with her knives again before Yan gets out, meaning that he won the battle. Shiju and Lu engage in a sword duel before she unintentionally chops off a tombstone from which a gigantic evil spirit rises out seeing this. Lu asks what it is in shock. The spirit attacks Shiju in anger but Lu saves her by shielding her body and wonders why he did that as she looks at him in surprise. The man Yuhui grabs her and they all try running away from it in different directions but the spirit sends imp heads after them and they all end up circling back to it. They try to hide from its attacks but see that it wouldn't hold out for long so Yihui proposes that they join their ink brushes together and create a shield so they reluctantly agree to it before the spirit transforms into a monk which Yihui identifies as Bayan Kei, who was betrayed by a scholar named Xiao Li, working for the Emperor of Tang. Yan realizes that Lu's pupil marking brush leads them to the pen burial of Master Xai Yong, so Yan, Shiju, and Lu decide to go out of the shield to defeat B and Kai. As they slowly approach the spear and Yan uses of his last DT to power Shiju, she uses her sword to defeat it, making it disappear, but as she shatters its urn to end it, it gets unleashed again. As the spear rises again, a brush flies out of it and hovers in the sky before Lu's green lotus brush vestige flies out of him and joins the other one. The brush flies close to Bian Kai and starts writing a poem that Yuhu recognizes as the Orchard Pavilion by Wang Siji and realizes that the brush is Wang Siji's heavenly cloud brush. Once the poem's completed, Bian Kai decides to rest in peace and vanishes. Once the skies turn normal, Yuhu tries to capture the pen, but his pen holder gets deflected as Mr. Wei arrives and catches the pen with wrong, as Lu realizes that they wouldn't have come if it wasn't for the paper slip and tries attacking Wei with thunder but he deflects it back towards him and tells Rong to leave him be after which Lu angrily says he'll never believe her so she leaves. Once they've gone, Chanking slowly arrives and Yu Hui says they should take Yan and Lu their house since their pen holder is destroyed. Later, Chanking realizes they'll tell on him about Fang Bin if they're interrogated and goes to finish them off but runs into Shiju standing over their bloody corpses as she says she killed them. Thanks for joining us on this mystical journey as we explore the ancient artistry and unravel the secrets of the Seven Lords. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more ink-filled adventures. Until next time, may your brushes always be filled with magic.